channel. So in today's video, I have invited Muhammad Akhib Ansari, who is currently doing his PhD from University of Texas, and uh, he did his master's in research from IIS Bangalore. To uh, start with uh, today's video, let uh, Muhammad Akhib introduce himself, his background, and his journey from bachelor's to PhD. So uh, Akhib, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Atik. Um, thanks for calling me here. Um, so my name is Muhammad Akib Ansari. Uh, I like to be called Akib, and I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering in the year 2018 from Aligarh Muslim University. Then I moved to Indian Institute of Science for a master's degree in mechanical engineering again, and that I completed in 2020. And then I have moved to University of Texas at Austin for my PhD in engineering mechanics. So I have been here for about a year now. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So Akhil, uh, what made you uh, the reason to select this university? That it was the research or university or the country? Right, right, right. right. It, it, it's a very good question. Um, so, see, uh, I, I mean, during my bachelor's and master's studies, it was very clear that what I wanted to do was to go in the mechanics field. Okay, to do research in mechanics, engineering mechanics, fracture mechanics, solid mechanics, and things like that. Now, as it happens, uh, the University of Texas is among the very few universities in US as well as the world, which has specialized programs in mechanics. So right now, my PhD program is called PhD in engineering mechanics. So when I get the degree, hopefully, that will say he has got a PhD in, PhD in engineering mechanics. Okay. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, the conventional road is to go through mechanical engineering or aerospace engineering or civil engineering. Even in those areas, you can get the same subject. But if you have a very specialized field, that has two advantages. Number one, you work with a very, let's say, concentrated group of peers who are all focused in your area. So you get to learn a lot. Secondly, because the field is again, I mean, very narrowed down, you get a lot of courses in your area with which you can widen your approach. So now, because uh, I, I knew that this program was offered at University of Texas, I applied here and applied a few other universities. Okay. Same reason. They, they also had uh, these programs. Some some are called mechanics programs, some are called applied mechanics programs and so on. And then, yeah, I applied to them I, 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 and I, I got selected. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the main reason uh, for selection of this university is your research area. So your uh, movement, Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Can you uh, please provide me the details regarding your uh, PhD program? So what are the credits requirements uh, to get mm -hmm. into that PhD program and duration of that PhD, then number of publications required? to get the PhD uh, degree in that uh, university. Okay, so uh, getting into the university uh, in, the, in the US, there is a pretty much a common procedure in which mm -hmm. you apply and then you take GRE, you take TOEFL. Right now, I hear that GRE is being waived in a number of universities because of COVID situation. Yes, yes. But uh, I mean, usually you would have to take GRE, you would have to take TOEFL, you would have to apply your transcripts, you have to write a statement of purpose and so on. Uh, now, after you do all that, I can definitely talk more about that if yes, you are interested. Sure, sure. We'll get up to that next. But uh, right now, I let me just talk about more about the PhD program itself. What happens when we go into that? So once you come in, uh, there's a timeline, and there are some milestones you have to cross. Okay. So the first milestone is the written qualifying exam. Okay. The second milestone is the oral qualifying exam, and the third milestone is the candidacy. Uh, so some department programs do candidacy, some don't. But the first two, they are usually, I mean, throughout the US will find them. Mm -hmm. So in the written qualifying exams, you show your strength in the in the in the subjects which which you which you have undertaken, basically courses. Yeah. And there's a, obviously, as the name suggests, it, it's a written exam on on the broad area of courses. With basically, you should know to continue your research. You have to pass that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am at this I am I am at that stage. I, I recently passed my written qualifying exams. Okay. Then after one or two years, what you have to do is your oral qualifying exams, which basically is again as the name suggests, uh, oral. Okay. In this case, you have to talk about some research of yours, what you are planning to do, what you have done okay. till now, things like that, and so on. And the candidacy, yeah, it's just like it's more of a formality in which there is a there is a committee which is basically the same committee who is going to judge your PhD, and mm -hmm. they just make sure that you are on the right track and so on. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, and for uh, okay, one more thing I missed. So the course requirements, uh, the course requirements in my program are none. So you don't have to take any courses. Now it depends upon, uh, I mean, depends on program to program. For example, in different aerospace engineering and so on, you have let's I think five or six courses which you have to take. In my program, 
there is no requirement but i have taken like uh, six courses till now i plan to take one or two courses each year for coming semesters okay uh, just that there is no compulsion you can take it all of, of your own volition yeah. so uh, these courses uh, credits will not be included in your uh, qualifier examination exactly no so uh, in the qualifying exam they don't care what courses you have taken what they care about is whether you know the material or not so the way it works is the following when you are going to take a qualifying exam in my in my particular area you have to give them three subjects that i am ready to take the qualifying exams in these three subjects in my case they were uh, mathematics they were dynamics and they were uh, solid mechanics mm. now for mathematics and for each of them they give you a syllabus that okay in mathematics we'll ask you this from these topics okay as it happens these topics were already covered in two of the mathematics courses which i had taken now okay. obviously taking those courses helps me here yeah. but it's not necessary for me to take those courses so if i for example say that okay i know enough maths i don't want to take your courses it's mm. fine by them okay i just have to know that material and pass the qualifying exam okay okay so uh, is there any uh, duration for your phd program specifically or so, can extend it right so uh, i mean uh, this is one of the one of the uh, aspects in which a us phd differs from a european phd so in europe mostly what happens is there is a fixed duration it's project based and there is a fixed duration 3 or 4 years and yeah in the us it's it's flexible i mean uh, i think india the, the system that works in india if you go to iits and so on Mm. they have borrowed it from the us what they right. do is they it's basically flexible until your advisor is satisfied that's right yeah exactly so it's not it, it's not dependent upon the um, uh, i mean the number of years so for example i i did ask my professor this question how long will the phd last he mm. said 4 to 6 years okay. depending on how you do okay yeah uh, there will be no funding issues if you extend also there will be funding you correct uh, so, yeah. correct correct so again uh, again because the funding is coming from the professor Mm-hmm. if he wants to extend he will provide you money that's it okay okay, okay. simple logic yeah. yeah yeah coming to this uh, similar question uh, requirement of number of publications to complete this uh, right, right 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 so uh, again i mean uh, there is no requirement per se there is no written rule that you have to provide this much uh, number of papers okay this much publication so on and, and and there is a good reason for that because the quality of papers can vary i can i yeah. can publish 10 low quality papers or one high quality papers so on so it's it's not wise decision for any university to put a number to this mm. as a thumb rule i again i asked my advisor this question he said that in the past his students have published two to five papers okay. uh, when i say when i say papers i mean first author papers obviously okay. you can collaborate with other people in the lab and you can have nth author paper mm. in 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 mechanical engineering it does matter from what i have heard in for example computer science mm. it doesn't matter which author okay. you are in mm. computer science the okay in computer science the order of the author is the alphabetical order because they don't care with the first author okay in in our field they do care and is it really uh, yeah i am hearing this first time no 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 it's it's true in computer science i i i'll tell you another fact um, in computer science uh, journals carry less weight than conferences anyway so yeah coming back to the number of publications as i said uh, two to five is a good number mm-hmm. some people do more um some people do can do less but yeah a good number is i i, I so at isc they said 3 to 4 here okay. they said 2 to 5 so that's the ballpark range which, which you should expect yeah so akhir uh, why did you choose uh, university of texas this iisc bangalore is top research institute in india yeah uh, that is true um, the main reason was to get exposure okay. to basically i mean that that is true and and i can even verify that they, for example the rigor in the courses and so on is, is similar yeah I, I sc and at ut i mean i won't say that the courses here are tougher or courses there were tougher they are at the same level mm. uh, i mean isc i always tell people that's definitely a world class university you will get definitely good result there okay. and uh, so on but the reason of coming here was to hold one was to get a better exposure of what's going on in the world basically okay and like personally kind of travel see a new culture try to maintain a new culture that appealed me instead of just living there the same moreover moreover okay the job opportunities in the us are better so for example uh, in in academics okay the jobs may have dried out but in industry job the job opportunities are much more in the us mm-hmm. and um, yeah and and you can get proper jobs where you require what you learned in your phd okay. in india the industry is still growing it's in mm-hmm. the nascent state there are definitely jobs but here i mean obviously there are no jobs